What's going on everyone? My name is Alpha and today we're doing a highly requested Pokemon Ice type Hardcore Nuzlocke on Pokemon Y. That's a weird... Let me rephrase that. Today's challenge will be, can I beat Pokemon Y Hardcore Nuzlocke using only Ice type Pokemon throughout the entire game? Jeez, that's going to be tough. I want to run down the road. It's going to be obviously a Hardcore Nuzlocke. A first Pokemon or whatever Ice type I catch has to be a Shiny Pokemon and I can only catch one per route and it's going to be a long time before we encounter a lot of Ice type because Ice types are normally held off into later in the game for some reason. Same with dragon types, to just hold off for longer periods of time. But besides that, it's going to be a hardcore nose like a very tough challenge to beat through Pokemon Y because there's actually a version exclusive Pokemon and all that. And adding more rules on top of that, each of my Pokemon will be nicknamed after you guys in the comments. So thank you so much for leaving a comment in my previous challenge video. If you guys want to be nicknamed after a future Pokemon in my future challenge video, just drop it in the comments and hopefully I'll pick yours. And also, if you guys can, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. It'll really help me grow as a YouTuber. But that should be all the rules and challenge things we gotta get through let's get into the challenge video itself to be enough uh there's no ice type starter pokemon regardless of how hard you try so i'm i'm gonna have to cheat in a shiny pokemon for us to start with we're gonna start with a pokemon that is considered a starter pokemon so we can get ourselves an eevee a shiny eevee now it's not an ice type right now but it can evolve into an ice type pokemon so Obviously, I'm just going to bend the rules a little bit. I don't want to give myself like a full-on Obama Snow right now. That might not be fair for the rest of the game. But I'm going to I'm gonna cheat myself in a shiny Eevee so I could get started in this challenge video. Our Eevee had a lovely time. We're going to head into the very first gym of the game. Start off with our Eevee. And Eevee's a decent Pokemon, as you can see. Eevee is more of a physical attacker. As you can see, it two shots down the Surge Kit from Biola in the first gym. And then from there, I could just have to <laughs> chip down the Vivalon. I do have Swift on it just in case it decides to go crazy and use Harden against me. But we're, we should be fine as we're actually able to knock down the Vivalon pretty easily and receive our first gym batch of the game. From there, we're going to head into the cave. I'm not too sure what it's called. Glittering Cave? I think it's Glittering Cave. In here, you're able to find yourself, or it's second Pokemon technically, you're able to find uh, a fossil, which you have to get the sale fossil and then head back and restore the Amora you get from the fossil. And it has a chance to actually be shiny and it's part rock and ice type. So it's going to fit right in our challenge video. So we're just going to have to go and reset into it. Obviously, becomes shiny. Eventually, we are able to find ourselves a shiny Amora. It actually took a long time for once uh, i do not like soft resetting because i just have to mash a and i don't like the nicknaming portion because i have to skip the nicknaming for now because i need to get through it very quickly i can't just input the nickname each time once we get our shiny amora we're able to actually head into uh the next i don't know the town i'm not really good with pokemon town names but we head into the next town where the second gym in the game is we actually pass route 8 where we're able to find ourselves our next shiny pokemon but since we don't have the good rod we actually have to come back so our team is looking very vulnerable and weak i've actually tried this challenge multiple times in the past and it does not work out well unless you actually go out and ev train so we have to go ev train or ev all the way up until i can have higher defenses higher attack higher speed higher hp just try to max it out because more stats are overall better for our Eevee. Once we're done Eevee training both our Pokemon to the max, they're actually pretty powerful. As we're able to face off against the second gym leader in the game, we're able to face off against Grant next. Grant is going to be the rock type gym leader, and I'm gonna start the battle off against him using my Eevee. Eevee is just gonna sand attack first, and then baby doll eyes into the Moro to lower his attack, because I don't wanna get hit with a takedown that does a lot of damage. I switch into my Moro next. It's gonna get Thunder Wave, which is kinda annoying, since it got baby doll eyes, its attack fell multiple times. I can Aurora Beam into him, and it has a chance to lower its attack stat. And it does very little damage to me unless it decides to use like Rock Tomb or Ancient Power. Any of those are super effective against me and could do a lot of damage to me. I do get Ancient Power as a move after this fight, and it's actually pretty useful. And from there, I could avoid a Rock Tomb, which I think might have killed me. We're just gonna pretend we probably survived that and we didn't win based off hacks and we're able to one shot down the tyrant and we're able to beat down grants and uh, we get to move on from there next up we got to face off against corinna next and this fight was actually pretty close too barely able to beat it luckily he didn't actually go for power punch too many times against me so we're able to beat down the lucario and then head into corinna's gym so we face off against corinna once again corinna is going to be the fighting type gym leader in the game and we have to get through this and then finally we're able to get some better ice type pokemon but we're going to start the battle off against her Mianfu using my Eevee to sand attack into him to lower his accuracy continuously until I'm able to uh, charm it down. And charm is going to lower the attack stat of it multiple times until it gets no attack stat left. Once I 
uh, debilitate it as much as I can by lowering his accuracy and his attack stat. I can move out and send in my Amora next. My Amora is going to give the best it can as I'm an ancient power and hope I get a stat boost. And it took all five ancient power to get one stat boost, but eventually I am able to get a stat boost and I'm able to knock out the Mianfu. Now I needed this so I can outspeed uh, the Halucha. Unfortunately, I still don't outspeed him, so <laughs> that was a bad play. Uh, so Halucha is still getting knocked me out as I icy winded, and then the Machoke comes out. I'm an Aurora Beam into him and does not knock him out, but he goes for a Power Punch and I live it with 7 HP, allowing me to Aurora Beam. He's getting healed up, but that's fine because I two shot it regardless and I outspeed him. I knock out the Machoke and we end up beating Karina. That defense boost saved me so much with that Ancient Power and uh, my EV want to evolve into Sylveon, we're not going to let that happen. From there, we're going to move out and go out into this Lapras owner. This NPC gives us a Lapras for free. And if you guys do know, Lapras is part Ice type, so it's actually pretty useful and I learned Surf, so you know, perfect timing for us as well since we need a Surfing Pokemon. We're going to spend a lot of time soft resetting until we get ourselves a Shiny Lapras, which we can ride on, and it's pretty tanky and just overall a great Pokemon. From there, we're going to actually head into Coromine City. And in here, we're able to get multiple things. We're able to get ourselves some Lax Incense and then go out and also get ourselves a Good Rod, which is going to be useful for our next Pokemon, which we head all the way back into, you know where Grand's Gym is? We're going to head back there, <laughs> ironically. It's going to be the route right before this town. It's going to be in Route 8. We're able to fish out our next shiny Pokemon, which is going to be a Sheldred. Sheldred is not an Ice-type Pokemon, but it can evolve into Cloyster, which is going to be a Water Ice-type Pokemon. So we have two Water Ice-type Pokemon on our team. So we're going to actually find ourselves a shiny shelter, add it to our team, and then quickly train it up into the level cap-ish, and then evolve it into a cloister, which we could take to the next gym, where we face off against Ramos next. Ramos is going to be the grass-type gym leader, and we're going to start the battle off against him using my brand new cloister. Cloister is going to Ice Coast Spear, take it acrobatic super easily, it's a defensive wall, it's going to knock out the jump bluff, and also knock out the weeping bow. Maybe I should have been more careful, but I know I outspeed most of his things. He switched out to his Go-Go, which is going to get outsped. And I Icicle Spirit and knock out the Go-Go as we're able to beat down Ramos and get the 4th Gym Badge. That was pretty easy, actually. <laughs> From there, we're going to actually head into the Power Plant. And there's not much for us to do in the Power Plant. We just have to be careful and not get past the level cap. The level cap's at 37, so we have to be careful and not put the XP share on and just beat all the trainers there. And then we're able to face off against Clement next. Clement, it's going to be the lecture type gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Lapras. Assuming I was going to Ice Beam into the Mocha, I went for Ice Beam. Hit the Magneton because he both switched out. But I do have Bodos for the Magneton as I'm able to knock him out pretty easily. And then from there, he switches out into his Heliolisk, which I go for Bodos. It knocks him to half HP. But I have to risk it. I'm like, do I outspeed? I feel like I outspeed. Since I'm actually EV trained, unlike his Pokemon, I'm pretty sure I can outspeed the Helios, especially he went down in speed one stage. So we're able to knock him out in two shot. He then sends out his Amoga, which I don't want to mess with. So I went out into my Amora. Amora's going to take a bit of damage to the Amoga, but we're able to knock him out with an Ancient Power and easily beat down Clement. Then we're able to head into the next gym and face off against Valerie next. Valerie is going to be the fairy type gym leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against her using my Lapras to surf into the Mawile, which isn't too difficult. We two shot him and knock him out. I want to save my Lapras for the Sylvia. I want to switch out into our brand new Pokemon, Aurorus, against the Mr. Mime, which is not going to do too well against him. We get a plus stat raise with Ancient Power, which is nice, but uh, it's going to knock us down pretty low. But we're able to knock out the Mr. Mime, and then the Sylveon comes out next. I take a very damaging Dazzling Gleam, and I don't do too much damage, so I just switch out into my Lapras to actually knock out the Sylveon, and we end up beating down Valerie pretty easily. From there, we actually head into the Frost Cavern, which I think that's what it's called, with very generic name. Uh, we're able to go into the Ice Stone and get an Ice Rock and also evolve our Eevee finally into a Glaceon. But at this point, we also already missed all the Ice moves, so we actually have no Ice move until we get Blizzard. From there, since we're in the Frost Cavern, it's a new route for us to find ourselves our next Shiny Pokemon. So we're going to spend our time actually hunting out for a new Shiny Pokemon. We're going to find ourselves a Shiny Piloswine, which is exactly what I want. Perfectly, actually. So we're actually going to catch ourselves a Piloswine and add it to our team and go back, teach it Ancient Power, and then evolve it into a Mamoswine, which is actually going to be pretty fun. From there, I'm going to just clear through Frost Cavern and beat down Team Flare in here. And now we have access into Route 18, I believe, which is going to be the Icy Road. Actually, I, could, I think it's called the Mamoswine Road because you use Mamoswine. But in here, you're able to find yourselves more Ice-type Pokemon, which is going to be pretty useful. There's a lot of different ice type Pokemon. We're just really hoping it's not a Delibird. And we actually found ourselves a pretty cool Pokemon. We found ourselves a Snover. 
Unfortunately, we can't use Megas in these challenge videos because they're too easy to use, but we're able to catch ourselves a Shiny Snow at the very least. And then from there, we're going to head into uh, Anastar City and face off against our rival, which isn't too difficult at all. Her Greninja is useless. We're able to beat her down pretty easily. From there, we're going to face off against Anastar City's Gym Leader. We're going to face off against Olympia next. Olympia is going to be the Psychic-type Gym Leader in the game. We're going to start the battle off against her using my Cloister to Icicle Spear. This can set up Reflect, which is kind of annoying. But Cloister actually has Skill Link, so we're able to basically break through his Reflect pretty easily. As we're able to beat down the Sigliff, and then her next Pokemon will be a Slow King. I switch out into my Bomb Snow to <laughs> Wood Hammer, destroy the Slow King, and then I can switch out because I fell asleep against the Meow Stick. I switch out to my Aurorus, which will actually two shot and knock out the Meow Stick with a Blizzard. And we end up beating Olympia pretty easily. From there, we have to do all the Team Flare stuff, which isn't too difficult, until the very end where we have to face off against this ginormous legendary called Yavelto. We have to catch it, so it's not too difficult. And then we're going to face off against Lysander without Yavelto, obviously. So we're going to start the battle off against him using my Cloister. I'm pretty certain that I could survive a high jump kick, so I start off with my Cloister to Ice Skill Spear. And from the previous battle, Pyro actually doesn't do a lot of damage with Fire Blast. It does a lot of damage and also burns me. So it cuts my attack stat in half, and I'm unable to knock him out using my Cloister, which sucks. Oh, so I have to switch out to my Lapras and then Surf. Surf works, knocks him out. His next Pokemon won't be a Honchkrow, which I Ice Beam. I thought he's gonna do something else. Honestly, I thought he's gonna do more. But we're able to knock out the Honchkrow, and then the Gyarados comes out next. We're able to Thunderbolt into him. Does not knock him out as he goes for an Outrage, which does a lot of damage to my poor Lapras. So I decided to actually switch out my Lapras, obviously, because I don't want it to go down. I switched out to my Glacier, which was a bad play because I got crit. And now I'm, I gotta switch out again. Luckily enough, I switch out to my Bomb Snow. It does hit itself in confusion, and I'm able to Wood Hammer into him as he goes for an Iron Head, which survived pretty easily. Wood Hammer luckily doesn't flinch, and we're able to knock out the Gyarados and beat down Team Flare once and for all. Next up, we're gonna face off against our rivals on the bridge. It's a very easy battle, there's no point to it at all. So from there, we're gonna face off against the eighth gym leader in the game. We're gonna face off against Nobel City's gym leader, Wolfric. Pretty easy as well. We're gonna start the battle off against him using my Glaceon. Finally, to Blizzard into his Obama Snow, two shot him and knock him out. His next Pokemon is gonna be a Cragno, which I go for a crunch, which I go for a bite, not even a crunch. I go for three bites and knock out the Cragno as I take the flash cannon pretty easily. From there, he's gonna switch out into his Avlock, which I have no problems with because Avlock is trash. I go to my Aurorus, which I don't think is the best play. I should have went to my Lapras, but <laughs> Aurorus Ancient Powers knocks out the Avlock. I take it back. It was a perfect play. From there, we're going to head into Victory Road, and you guys do know me. Victory Road isn't too difficult most of the time, and since we have an Ice-type team, it's, it's not that difficult. We don't lose a single Pokemon. We get our training done, and now we can head into the Pokemon League and face off against the Elite Four next. Now, Elite Four is actually not too difficult. As we start off our Elite Four Challenge, against Malva. Malva is going to be the fire type Elite Four member. Pretty smart to start off with, so I don't have to face off against it later. I'm going to start the battle off using my Lapras. Unfortunately, it gets Noble Roar by her Pyroar, and I'm unable to knock him out in one shot, and it just keeps me stuck here. I go for a Body Slam, trying to get a Paralyze on it so I can outspeed and surf it, but unlucky it doesn't. But I'm able to knock him out with a Surf. He then switches out into her Torque, which for some reason I went out to my Mamoswine. I was pretty confident Earthquake was going to kill. It did kill, so Mamoswine is very tanky and very powerful. I'm also able to dodge a Flare Blitz, which I didn't know it can miss. So I'm able to Ancient Power into the Town Flame, two shot him. I dodged two Flare Blitz, <laughs> and I'm able to knock out the Town Flame. What, what is his luck? He did see me put on the Lax Incense, so that's obviously why I did. I'm also able to outspeed the Chandelier and Earthquake him to knock him out, and we end up beating Malva without losing a single Pokemon. From there, we're going to face off against Wingstrom next. Wingstrom's going to be a Steel type Elite Four member of the game. We're going to start the battle off against him using my Mamoswine to just Earthquake. Knock out the Klefki. Super simple. As simple as it can get. Next up, he switches out to his Age Slash, which I go for an Earthquake. Does a lot of damage. Almost knocks him out. He goes for an Iron Head, which almost knocks me out. And at this point, I'm just going to keep going for Earthquakes because I believe in my Mammoth Swine to knock him out. Actually, I went for Age of Power. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. But another Earthquake, since he doesn't have Shadow Snake, would knock him out. And then he switches out into his Scizor. I decided to go out into my Lapras. Two Surfs would knock him out, which is... Alright, pretty decent. Scissor is not too big of a problem. His next Pokemon will be our Pearl Pass. He also gets two-shotted, and we end up beating Wingstrom without too much issues. Speaking of no issues at all, we're going to face off against Drasna next. Drasna is going to be the Dragon-type Elite Four member of the game. We're going to start the battle off against her using my Glaceon. Glaceon is going to Blizzard one-shot the Draglich. Powerful. She then switches out to a Norvern, which I don't outspeed, but I take a Flamethrower pretty easily. Ice Beam would knock him out. Her next Pokemon will be a Dragon. I go for an Ice Beam. It survived with 1 HP, 
revenge and then knock on my glacier and i'm just so upset i was like this was the worst thing that could happen why did it live with one hp and Cloyster is able to clean it up and also knock out the Ataria as well. But why did I have to lose a Pokemon? Of course I lose a Pokemon to the easiest, the easiest Elite Four member for me. Next up, we're going to face off against uh, Seelberg next. Seelberg's going to be the Water type Elite Four member, of course. And we're going to start the battle off against him using my Lapras to Thunderbolt into him. Two shots to knock him out. He then switches out into his Barbarical, which I'm able to survive a Cross Chop. That was not a good play, but I decided to just stay in and then go for a wood hammer. He, I avoid, I avoid a stone edge, which I mean, you know what? Sometimes you have to play with the luck. He then switches out into a Starmie, which I'm able to switch out into my Lapras. Thunderbolt would actually go through the light screen and it just, it just knocks him out. Powerful, powerful crit. Uh, he then goes out to his Gyarados. He survives a Thunderbolt. How did he survive a Thunderbolt? I think it's through light screen, obviously, but uh, he's gonna go for an earthquake. I always thought he goes for a second Dragon Ends. He goes for an Earthquake this time, and I lose my Lapras, which is unfortunate. But I can survive any Earthquake. I can survive any move with my Cloyster, which I should have went into. And I should have went Icicle Spear him a long time ago. As I'm able to beat down the Gyarados and get, well, and get through the Leaf 4. Now we're going to face off against the Champion next. The Champion isn't too difficult. We're going to start the battle off against the Champion using my Cloyster to Icicle Spear and knock out the Hawlucha. She then switches out into her Tyrantrum, which I'm able to Icicle Spear and knock out in 5 hits. And then her Gudra comes out next. I'm able to Ice Cold Spear as well. Knock him out. Super simple. Her next Pokemon is an Aurorus, which we do have one. I went for a Razor Shell. I was hoping I could one-shot him. I don't even hit him. And he's getting Thunder and knock out my Cloyster, which... Of course it happens like that. Of course it had to happen like that. From there, I'm going to switch out into my Abomasome to Woodhammer and knock out the Aurorus. Next up, she's going to switch out to her Gorgite, which I'm able to Ice Shard it multiple times. Take a Phantom Force, which is fine. As she's going to heal up, we go through this process multiple times until I'm actually able to knock out the Gorgeist. And her final Pokemon will be a Gardevoir, which I'm able to Ice Shard. It's going to knock me out, obviously, but I can go out into my Mamoswine and Earthquake it to knock him out. And unfortunately, at the end, we lose two more Pokemon. And in total, we lose four Pokemon. We didn't have a single death all the way through into the third Elite Four member we face off against. So, of course, it had to happen like that. We don't have a deathless run. Uh, I'm going to update it in sec, but that just sucks. At least we cleared through this ice type hardcore Nuzlocke. It was a pretty fun challenge to do. And yeah, at least we completed it. We also beat AZ at the end if you guys want to watch. But uh, that, should, that should wrap it up. Thanks so much for watching. It means a lot to me that you guys made it this far in this video. If you guys can, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel means a lot to me and my name is Ben Alpha. hope you guys all had a great day and i'm out peace